put God first in your life and everything will fall into place. Everything. Today, God wants you to put him first. We're also going to pray a powerful prayer with you, calling on God to bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessings of this prayer. In Matthew 6, verse 33, the Bible tells us, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, imagine you're at the heart of a busy city, surrounded by towering skyscrapers and the never-ending hum of life. Yet, in the midst of this whirlwind of activity, you find an oasis of calm, a place where time seems to slow down and peace reigns supreme. This is what life feels like when we put God first. In the middle of our chaotic lives, amidst the many roles we play and the countless challenges we face, when we center our lives around God, we discover an extraordinary peace, a profound sense of purpose, and a divine direction that guides us. This is the journey we are about to embark upon today, a journey of putting God first and reaping the manifold blessings that follow. There is a fundamental truth, one that resonates deeply within our hearts, influencing every decision and action we make. I am talking about the profound realization that it's absolutely essential to make God the main focus of our lives our life is shaped by the things we decide are most important. Just like when we choose to stop and watch the sunrise, hurry to finish our tasks, or spend time with loved ones, each of these choices shows what we value most. In the same way, we choose a place for God in our lives. So, we have to ask ourselves, have we given God the first place? Which is where He should be? Or has he gotten lost in the mix of all the other things we have to do? Think about how everything in nature works together perfectly. The planets move around the sun in a specific pattern. The seasons change one after the other, showing the beauty of nature. Even our bodies work in a certain way, with our hearts beating and our lungs breathing in and out. This shows that everything has its own place and role. Just like these, God, too, has a special place in our lives. He should be at the very center, the most important part of our lives. When we make sure God is at the center, our lives become beautifully balanced, like a well-played song. The story of how the world began in the Bible shows us how important God is. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God made everything come alive just by speaking. The land, the sky, the sea, and all the animals came to be because God wanted them to. And we, who are made to be like him, carry some of his greatness, just like everything else in the universe. Our lives should also revolve around God. God takes priority over everything else. When we put God first, it fills us with peace, purpose, and joy. Yet, in the hustle and bustle of our lives, it's all too easy to lose sight of God's rightful place. We get entangled in the complexities of our worldly lives, often forgetting our divine origin. Some of us may be tempted to ask, why should we put God first? Isn't it enough to be kind and compassionate and to live a godly life? However, in Exodus 20, verse 3, the Bible makes it clear when God gave us the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. When God says this, it's not out of a divine need for validation, but out of a deep parental love. He knows that our true fulfillment comes from making him our priority. Placing others or other things above God means we are letting them take his rightful place in our lives whether we recognize it or not. So someone might say, this is from the Old Testament. We don't need to do this today. Well, although in different words, 
Jesus expressed similar sentiments in the New Testament. In Matthew 22, verses 37 to 38, the scripture tells us, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. So, here, Jesus is validating that the first commandment still stands. This verse means we should put God first in our lives. Just like this, Old Testament verse tells us, You shall have no other gods before me. Loving God wholeheartedly means placing Him above all else. Some of us prioritize our jobs, while others put family members like wives, husbands, children, or parents ahead of God. For some, God might even be at last place, while for others, God might not have any place in their lives at all. But today, we'll shift our focus. Today, we will rightfully position God at the forefront of our lives, putting Him above everything and everyone else. When we don't place God first, it can lead to many challenges. Sometimes we even end up fighting unnecessary battles. Today, I urge you to put God first. Don't we all benefit when we place God in His rightful place? It's a win-win. Everyone wins when we put God first. We become better wives, better husbands, better human beings. We become better in every area of our lives, guided by God's counsel and wisdom. God's commandments aren't meant to control us. They're there to help us live our best lives. His first commandment, therefore, isn't a burden, but an invitation. An invitation to align our lives with His divine wisdom. By putting God first, we allow His infinite love and wisdom to guide our lives. This brings about a profound transformation one that fills our lives with hope and love. Now let's talk more about what happens when we place God at the center of our lives. When we decide to put God first in our lives, we embark on a journey that brings forth blessings beyond our imagination. Did you know that God will actually bless you more than you expected? Yes. Ephesians 3 verses 20 to 21 tells us, Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Note that the scripture says, above all that we ask or think. That's talking about blessings beyond our imagination. The first blessing is that of divine guidance. When we prioritize God, we invite His wisdom into our lives. We move forward under His guidance, secure in the knowledge that our steps are ordered by Him. As stated in Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. This means that when we put God first, we will never be lost. God will guide us in the right direction. The second blessing is one of peace. Amid life's storms, when we prioritize God, an unexplainable tranquility surrounds us. This peace stems from knowing that God is in control and that He works all things together for our good. This peace as Philippians 4 verse 7 describes it, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we put God first, He gives us peace that is beyond our comprehension. The third blessing comes in the form of divine provision. When God is our priority, our needs do not go unnoticed. He is our provider. As stated in the scripture mentioned earlier, in Matthew 6, verse 33, we are reminded, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, 
and all these things shall be added to you. The things here refer to our basic needs, which God promises to provide when we put him first. Another blessing we receive is protection. When we align our lives with God's will, we come under his divine protection. This doesn't mean we won't face difficulties, but it assures us that he will be with us through those times. Psalms 91 verses 1 to 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. By putting God first, we gain a protective refuge in Him. Another Bible verse, found in Philippians 4 verse 19 says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When we place God at the forefront, we invite His divine provision into our lives. He ensures that our needs, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual, are taken care of. As we walk with God, we experience His divine protection. Even in the midst of storms, we are secure, knowing that He is our shield and our fortress. And lastly, placing God first in our lives blesses us with purpose. Life isn't just a bunch of random things happening. It's like a beautiful story made by God. He has a plan for each one of us, a purpose that fulfills us and glorifies Him. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future when God is at the helm of our lives. We live with immense hope and joy. Prioritizing God brings numerous blessings of guidance, peace, provision, protection, and purpose. It takes us on a journey filled with His goodness and mercy. So let's make a conscious decision today and every day going forward to put God first and partake in the bountiful blessings that He promises to those who do so. Understand that when God takes precedence in our lives, we receive His divine blessings. However, when we put God first in our lives, it isn't solely for the blessings we might receive in return. While God's blessings are cherished gifts, the true heart of our devotion goes beyond any tangible or intangible rewards. We put God first because we truly love Him. It's like when you do something nice for a friend, not because you want something back, but just because you care about them. In the same way, we love and honor God, and that's why we make Him our top priority. We put Him first, not as a transaction or an expectation of blessings, but as an expression of our unwavering love and gratitude for who He is in our lives. Let us look again at the story of Abraham. He stands out as a vivid testament to this. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his beloved son, Isaac. Abraham was deeply grieved, but he chose to obey God. He was willing to give up what was most precious to him, placing God above even his cherished son. The Lord intervened at the last moment, sparing Isaac and blessing Abraham for his unwavering faith. His story is a powerful reminder of the blessings that follow when we put God first. The life of Daniel is also another story that speaks of the blessings of prioritizing God. Daniel was a captive in Babylon, serving under a king who did not worship the Lord. Yet, Daniel chose to remain faithful to God. Even when the king's decree threatened his life, Daniel continued to pray to God, placing him above the king's commands. He was thrown into a lion's den, but God shut the mouths of the lions and protected Daniel. His story serves as a beacon of hope, showing us that when we stand firm in our faith, placing God first, He helps us in the most miraculous ways. How then do we put God first in our lives? The first step is prayer and worship. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 18 reminds us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, 
for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Communication is key to any relationship, and our relationship with God is no exception. In prayer, we pour out our hearts to Him. We speak and we listen. Through worship, we express our love and gratitude. This daily communion fosters a deep personal connection with God. Another way to prioritize God is by studying His Word. I have said this several times. The Bible is not merely a historical text. It's God's living Word to us. It's His love letter to humanity, filled with His promises, guidance, and revelations about His nature. In Psalm 119, verse 105, the Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So regularly studying the Bible nourishes our spiritual lives, helping us grow in understanding and faith. But there are also benefits for our physical well-being when we focus on his teachings, as we prioritize him in our daily lives. In today's fast-paced world, Stress often feels like a constant shadow, but spending time in God's Word offers a much-needed break from the chaos. It provides comfort, wisdom, and guidance, all of which can significantly reduce our stress levels. When our minds are at peace, our bodies naturally follow suit. A decrease in stress can lead to better sleep, a more robust immune system, and an overall healthier body. The scriptures are filled with teachings that subtly guide us towards a healthier lifestyle. These teachings remind us of the value of rest, the importance of treating our bodies with respect, and the benefits of living a balanced life. When we internalize these messages, they often manifest as better physical habits, ensuring our bodies are well taken care of. Also, by studying God's Word, our decision-making process becomes more informed. We're equipped to make choices that not only benefit our spiritual self, but also our physical self. Additionally, dedicating time to understand the scriptures helps sharpen our minds, fostering mental clarity and focus. In essence, while the spiritual nourishment from God's Word is undeniable, its impact on our physical health is equally undeniable. By aligning ourselves with God's wisdom, both our spirit and body flourish. Now, obedience to God's Word and guidance is another crucial aspect of placing God first. Obedience is not about mindless compliance. It's about trusting in His wisdom and love. It's about choosing to follow His guidance. Even when the path is challenging, obedience is a testament of our love for God, affirming His rightful place in our lives. John 14, verse 15 tells us, If you love me, keep my commandments. And as we know, keeping the commandments is all about obedience. That guides us to the best outcomes in life. Consider that our resources, time, talents, and money are all gifts from God. Using them in a way that honors Him is another practical way to place God first. This could mean spending time in service, which refers to volunteering, helping out in the community, or doing acts of kindness without expecting anything in return. It's a way to give back, show love, and make a difference in the lives of others or in the broader community. We could also consider using our talents to further His kingdom or contributing financially to God's work. This further helps to reflect our recognition of God's Lordship over our lives. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 reminds us, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Placing God first in our lives is a conscious decision that we need to make every day. It's not about convenience, but about conviction. It's not about comfort, 
but about commitment. When we make this choice, our lives start falling into place according to his divine plan. We may not have everything we want, but we will have everything we need. For our God is a God of abundance, love, and peace. So let us make the conscious decision today and every day from now on to put God first, to center our lives around him, to let his love and wisdom guide our thoughts, words, and actions. Let us remember the promise in Proverbs 3, verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. As you put God first, may you experience the profound peace and joy that come from living in alignment with his will. May you witness the miraculous unfolding of his divine plan in your life. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious Lord. Heavenly Father, you are mighty, powerful, and deserving of all our praise. I thank you, Lord, that your greatness and love know no bounds in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will be the center of my life. Lord, help me to always put you first in everything I do. Father, I declare that my steps are ordered, that my vision is clear, and that my heart remains aligned with your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke any force or obstacle trying to distract me from your path. I cast away every thought, every doubt, and every negative influence that attempts to pull me away from your purpose for my life. Father, pour out your abundant blessings upon me. May my cup overflow with joy, peace, and prosperity as I continue to seek you first. Lord, may you open the windows of heaven and bless the work of my hands, ensuring that I lack nothing. O oh Lord, our God who heals, our Jehovah Rapha, I declare healing over every part of my body and mind in the name of Jesus. Father, may you restore my health, renew my strength, and rejuvenate my spirit. May every cell, every organ, and every system within me function in perfect harmony, reflecting your perfect creation. Lord, you are my protector. I ask that you shield me from harm, from all powers of darkness, from all destruction as I journey through life. Lord, may you be my refuge and fortress. May you keep me safe from all accidents and negative incidents, from all diseases and from all evil intentions. Faithful God, may you give your angels charge over me to watch over me at all times. In the name of Jesus, I pray for deliverance from any form of bondage, be it physical, emotional, or spiritual. Break every chain, free me from every shackle, and let me experience the true freedom. That comes from knowing and serving you, the true freedom that comes from putting you first. Lord, I also place my loved ones before you today. I ask that you watch over them, guide them, and draw them closer to you. Let your love and grace shine brightly in their lives, so they too might know the power of putting you at the center of all they do. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I pray that our lives will be transformed by your grace. May we experience a shift in our priorities, a renewal of our spirits, and a deepened commitment to put you first. May our words, thoughts, and actions reflect our love for you, and may our lives become testimonies of your greatness. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Starting your day with Psalm 121 is like wearing a warm protective jacket 
It reminds us that God is always there, looking out for us, no matter what the day might throw our way. So, no matter what you're facing today, God is reminding you, your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We're also going to pray a powerful prayer with you, calling on God for divine protection and to bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessings of this prayer. Each morning, when the world awakens to the fresh light of a new day, we're given a brand new start, similar to how the ocean waves wipe away yesterday's footprints on the sand. It's clear that the dawn doesn't just symbolize a new day. It embodies the promise of a fresh alignment with God. Now, at the core of our daily renewal is Psalm 121. This special and comforting psalm reminds us that even when the world feels heavy and challenges seem too big, our God is always looking out for us, ensuring we're safe and protected. It's like God is saying to us, you're not alone. I'm right here with you. Now listen to this. Psalm 121 is often referred to as the Traveler's Psalm. But why? Why this particular psalm? Well, this is because this psalm is a powerful prayer to start your day's journey. It is a reminder that no matter where we go or what challenges we face, God is always with us, watching over our every step. Just as a traveler might face unexpected twists and turns on a journey, we too encounter unknowns in our daily lives. Let's explore this powerful and impactful psalm verse by verse, which provides a comforting assurance that even in the midst of life's uncertainties, we're never truly alone. This psalm offers us hope, strength, and a guiding light, reminding us of God's unwavering presence and care. In verse 1, the scripture reads, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. Picture yourself in front of a towering mountain or staring up into the limitless sky. It's a humbling moment, isn't it? This verse mirrors that feeling. By directing our gaze to the hills, it's like turning our thoughts to something much larger than our daily concerns. God, then this verse has a probing question. Where does my help come from? This resonates with times when we're uncertain or fearful pondering where to turn for support. The beautiful answer is echoed in verse 2, but it is also nicely captured in Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So, when problems come and we feel alone, this verse reminds us that God is always there to help us. He's not just an observer. He's our ever-present help. So I ask you today, where does your help come from? Does it come from your job, your salary, or income? Does it come from your friends or loved ones? Where does it come from? Let's explore the best answer to these questions in verse 2. Verse 2 says, My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. It's human nature to be proud of our creations, be it something as simple as a meal or as complex as a painting. We craft our days, scheduling every hour with activities and goals. But this verse beckons us to pause and consider something greater in all creation, the heavens and the earth. The magnificence of the sparkling stars, the moon, the sun, and the beauty of our world, with its varied landscapes, environments, and life, all these were fashioned by the Lord. This is the great God that we serve, the God of all creation. In the book of Exodus, chapters 35 to 50, we remember the story of the Israelites. During their construction of the tabernacle in the desert, every worker was filled with the Spirit of God to design and create. Consider that their abilities were not solely their own. They were gifts from the divine Creator. Similarly, our skills, intelligence, and even our capacity to plan are gifts from God. 
This realization is both humbling and empowering. If our daily plans seem great, how much greater is the one who created the universe? By acknowledging that our true help comes from the creator of heaven and earth, we place our trust not in our limited abilities, but in the boundless power and wisdom of God. This verse, in its simplicity, reminds us that no matter how big our hills are, our helper is infinitely greater. Our God is bigger than our problems. Now, let's look at verse 3. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Each day we wake up. We step into a world full of surprises and uncertainties. Some days can feel like walking on a tightrope with challenges ready to throw us off balance. But here, in this verse, there's a powerful promise. God will not let our foot slip or be moved. It's like having the world's best balance keeper by our side. Consider the story of Peter walking on water in Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. As long as his eyes were fixed on Jesus, he could do the impossible. But the moment he focused on the raging storm, he began to sink. Yet, even in that instant of faltering, Jesus reached out immediately, ensuring Peter did not drown. God's protective hand is just like that, ensuring that even if we wobble, we won't fall. The latter part of the verse paints a comforting image. God never takes a break from looking after us. Unlike us who need rest and sleep, God's vigilance is constant. Imagine a guardian who never blinks, never tires, and never sleeps. That's our God, always active, ensuring our safety. Verse 4 says, Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. This verse serves as a beautiful echo to the previous verse, but broadens the scope. While the previous verse might seem more personal, this one extends that guardianship to the entirety of God's people by making reference to Israel. The story of the Israelites' escape from Egypt in Exodus chapters 12 to 14 comes to mind as they were pursued by Pharaoh's army with the Red Sea in front of them. It looked like all was lost, but God, who never sleeps nor slumbers, made a way for them, parting the Red Sea. It wasn't just about Moses or Aaron, but the entire nation. This verse reminds us that God's attentive care isn't just for individuals, but it is expansive, covering communities, nations, and even generations. His reliability doesn't just extend to one person. It covers all his people. Verse 5 says this, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The reality is this. Mornings bring with them the rising sun, casting light, but also heat. In life, too, we often encounter situations that might be intense or challenging. But here's the promise. God acts as a shade, offering a relief, a place of comfort amidst the heat of life's challenges. The story of Jonah, in the book of Jonah, chapter 4, verses 5 to 8, provides a reflection on this. After delivering God's message to Nineveh, Jonah sat outside the city, and God provided a plant to give him shade. Though Jonah's experience was short, it symbolizes the constant protective shade that God offers to us. The mentioning of the right hand in this verse is also significant. In biblical times, the right hand was a symbol of power, authority, and honor. When God is our shade at our right hand, it's not just about protection. It's also about empowerment. Every task we undertake, every challenge we face, has God's hand of strength and honor, guiding and supporting us. It's a reminder that with God by our side, who or what can be against us? Now let's move on to verse 6. It tells us, The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Let's face it, every day has its highs and lows. Much like the sun's blazing heat and the mysterious darkness of the night, the sun can be harsh, reminding us of the clear problems we face during our daily routines. These can be big things like troubles at work. 
problems at home, or even our own worries and fears. On the other hand, the moon, though it brings light to the night, often symbolizes the unknown, the challenges that we don't see coming, or those that confuse us. Remember the story of the Israelites wandering in the desert? This can be found in Exodus 13, verses 21 to 22, where God guided them with a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. This means he was with them during both the clear challenges of the day and the uncertainties of the night. Similarly, this verse comforts us with the promise that whether our problems are clear as day or hidden in the shadows of night, God is there providing protection and guidance. God is so good to us. Verse 7 assures us, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. Think about starting each day with a shield around you. Not just any shield, but one that can protect you from every bad thing that might come your way. This verse is like a promise of that shield. Every day, there are many things seen and unseen, that can hurt us. But here we are told that God will keep us safe from all of it. The story of Job might come to mind. In the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 10, Satan pointed out that God had put a protective shield around Job, his family, and everything he had. Even in his intense trials, God's protective hand over Job's life was evident. Similarly, this verse isn't just about protecting us from physical harm or challenges. It's deeper than that. It's a promise about guarding our very being, our essence, and our life. That means, even if we face problems, deep inside, where it matters most, we are kept safe and secure by God. It's like having the best safety promise as we step into the challenges of each day. And the last verse, which is verse 8, tells us, The Lord will keep you going out, and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. As we know it, life is a series of journeys. Sometimes we step out. Maybe it's for work or to face a challenge or even to embrace a new opportunity. Other times we come in, seeking rest, returning to our loved ones, or reflecting on our experiences. This verse paints a picture of God's constant care, no matter which direction we're heading. It's like having a protective friend by our side every time we step out of our front door, and the same friend welcoming us back home. Remember, the story of Jacob, when he was fleeing from his brother Esau and heading to a foreign land. In Genesis 28, verse 15, God promised him, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. Even in unfamiliar territory, Jacob wasn't alone. God was watching over his going out and his coming in. Likewise, this verse from Psalm 121 assures us of the same thing. God's care isn't just for today or tomorrow. It's forever. So, whether we're facing a new day, heading into an unknown adventure, or coming back from a long journey, God's promise remains unbroken. He watches over every step we take from now till the end of time. This thought offers us a warm blanket of comfort, knowing that in the big story of our lives, God's protective hand is always there, looking out for us. So, as we journey through the hills and valleys of life, we are never truly alone. The verses of Psalm 121 remind us that our steps are guided, our paths are watched, and our lives are surrounded by God's steadfast love and protection. Whether you're stepping out into a new challenge or finding your way back from a long journey, take heart. God's promise of care, protection, and guidance is unbreakable. Remember, in the big story of our lives, God's protective hand is always there, looking out for us. As you approach today, as you step into tomorrow, 
and all the days after. Carry with you the comforting assurance of this powerful psalm, and in moments of doubt or fear, just lift your eyes to the hills, to the heavens, and know, truly know, that your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Be encouraged and keep trusting in God, knowing God is always with you, now. To all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God, Heavenly Father and Eternal King, Creator of heaven and earth. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Your greatness and faithfulness knows no bounds, and I am grateful for your grace, mercies, and love. Lord, I thank you that your mercies are new every morning, reminding me of the everlasting love that you have for me. Today and every day, I claim the promises of Psalm 121 over my life. I declare that I will walk in confidence, knowing that you guard my steps and watch over my path. Lord, I acknowledge that you are my very present help in times of trouble, and you are my keeper. I thank you, Lord, that you are my shield and buckler, watching over me day and night, protecting me in my going out and coming in and delivering me from all evil. I thank you for your divine shade as you protect me from what is seen and unseen. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every challenge I face, knowing that you, Lord, are bigger than my problems. I declare victory over all negative circumstances, breakthroughs in every challenge, and blessings in every setback. Lord, I thank you that you turn all things for good for those who love and serve you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I stand against every plan of the enemy to hinder me from the path you've set before me. I rebuke any spirit of fear, doubt, anxiety, or confusion that tries to take root in my heart because you have not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and and a sound mind. Father, I lift up my loved ones before you. May they draw closer to you and come to experience your truth, love, and grace. Lord, I ask that you show them mercy, guide them, and protect them in their journeys. Father, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am thankful for each soul listening right now and I pray that each person is being touched by your loving presence. I pray that for those who have burdens, every burden is being lifted right now. May those whose minds and hearts are troubled find rest and peace in you. May you comfort us through your Holy Spirit. For those who are hurting and those being attacked by sickness or the symptoms of sickness, May your healing anointing flow through their entire being. Let the power of this collective faith among us create waves of blessings, peace and positive transformations in lives near and far. Lord, I place all my concerns, dreams and desires into your capable hands. Let your will be done in my life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Do you remember the promise that Jesus made before he went up to heaven? He told us that he would send the Holy Spirit to be with us. In John 14, verse 16, he said, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Jesus promised us a helper, and today I want to encourage you to take hold of this promise and welcome the Holy Spirit into your life. 
welcome him into every part of your day. Each day presents an opportunity to walk with the Spirit, allowing him to lead, guide, and shape your life according to God's perfect plan. Interestingly, have you ever thought about how you usually start your day, apart from those who starts their day with prayer? It may be very different for some of us. For some, you may stumble out of bed, blurry-eyed, reaching for the alarm to grant you just a few more precious minutes of sleep. You may fumble around in the room a bit brewing coffee, maybe catching a few minutes of the morning news, preparing for the day ahead. While for others, the way you start your day may be quite different. You may gradually turn, your arms sliding out from under the covers. You make a careful, deliberate movement. Your hand is searching for the familiar, cool, hard surface of your phone, resting on the nightstand. As you bring it closer, your thumb swipes the screen, and you begin to check for any messages or updates. The quiet hum of the morning is interrupted only by the occasional chime or buzz of notifications. And so your day begins. But in these moments, we may overlook something of vital importance. We may neglect an opportunity, a gift that could fundamentally change how we experience our day. That gift is the Holy Spirit. You can invite the Holy Spirit to be your constant companion, knowing that He is faithful to be with you and to work in and through you for God's glory. So you might be thinking, what does it really mean to start your day with the Holy Spirit? It's not as simple as pouring a cup of coffee or lacing up your shoes. No, starting your day with the Holy Spirit is so much more than that. It is the conscious decision to invite God through His Spirit to guide, inspire, and walk with you in all you do. It is the desire to not just live, but to live in communion with our Creator, allowing Him to lead us in His perfect wisdom and love. In Acts 8, verses 29 to 30, the Bible says, The Spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. In these verses, Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, is told by the Holy Spirit to go near a chariot. There's a man in the chariot reading the words of Isaiah, a prophet from the Old Testament part of the Bible. Because the Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot, he was able to help the man understand the words of Isaiah. This shows us how the Holy Spirit can guide us to be in the right place at the right time. Just like Philip, when we start our day with the Holy Spirit, we can get access to God's leading and God's wisdom. This is a good reason why we need to pray every morning and ask the Holy Spirit to be with us as we go about our day. Let us also consider the Apostle Peter. In Acts 10, Peter was praying on the rooftop when he had a vision that led him to a profound understanding of God's unconditional love. God, through His Spirit, spoke to Peter, guiding him, teaching him and preparing him for the works he had planned. At times you may think that these stories seem distant or they only happen in the Bible, but that's not true. The same Holy Spirit that guided Philip and Peter is the same Holy Spirit available to each of us every morning. The same God who provided strength and wisdom is there for us at the start of each new day. Our challenges might be different, but we all face our struggles. It may be a health crisis, financial difficulties, or personal struggles that threaten to consume us. But here's the profound truth. When we start our day with the Holy Spirit, we're not facing these trials alone. As Paul assured us in Romans 8 verse 31, If God is for us, who can be against us? So how do we invite the Holy Spirit into our mornings? It starts with a simple invitation. In the quiet moments before the day sweeps you away, take a moment to welcome God into your day. It doesn't require eloquent words or elaborate prayers. A heartfelt Holy Spirit, guide me today, is more than enough. Let the Bible be your morning nourishment as you feed your body and feed your spirit. Let the Word of God be the first thing that you consume each day. As we are reminded in Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, Man does not live by bread alone, 
but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Inviting the Holy Spirit into your mornings is a daily commitment. It's a journey filled with growth, discovery, and transformation. There may be days when it feels difficult, days when you might question if the Holy Spirit is truly with you. But remember, the Holy Spirit isn't based on feelings, but on God's promise. He's there with you, guiding you, even when you may not sense Him. And as you begin your day with the Holy Spirit, anticipate the transformation that will take place. You will experience peace amidst chaos, strength in weakness, and clarity in confusion. Beyond these blessings, you will develop a relationship with God that is deeper and more intimate than anything this world can offer. So let us embrace this spiritual practice, not just today, but every day, beginning each day with God, with His Holy Spirit, in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, the Bible encourages us saying, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious God. Heavenly Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. You are the creator of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth. You are the God of all things seen and unseen. You are the light in the darkness, a refuge for the weary and a stronghold for the weak. Your majesty fills the heavens, your glory fills the earth. Today I seek your holy presence. Make your presence known to me, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're the one who formed me, who knows every thought of my mind, every beat of my heart, and every detail of my life. Father, I invite your Holy Spirit into my life. Holy Spirit, please fill me, guide me, teach me, and empower me. Be my ever-present friend and help from the time I wake up until when I lay my head to sleep. May I feel your comforting presence in my life, not just now, but every single moment of every single day. Lord, may your Holy Spirit fill up all the space around me. May the Holy Spirit be everywhere inside me so I can feel God's special power and live like one of God's children. Come upon me, Holy Spirit. May you fill up my spirit, my soul, and my mind, so there's no room for anything that's not from God. Fill me up so much that when I get any attack from the enemy, all the enemy will see is you. Father, fill me with your presence and help me live the way God wants me to live. I'm inviting you to come and stay in my heart, to always be with me and to be in my home. Holy Spirit, I want you to shape my mind and my thoughts. Change me so that I can think in a new and better way. Father, I ask for strength. I thank you, Lord, that you are my strength and shield. When I am weak, you are strong. I thank you, Lord, that I can run to you, knowing that you will give me the strength to keep going. Lord, may you give me wisdom today. You are the source of all wisdom. Help me to make wise choices, to say the right words, and to live in a way that pleases you. Father, I pray for good health in my body, which serves as the dwelling place for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for complete and divine health. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I ask for your healing touch. I pray that each cell, each organ, each system within my body functions exactly as you designed it to. May my body be strong and able to fight off any illness or disease that might try to attack. I pray for protection from harm and danger and for you to shield me from any harmful substances or practices that could harm my health. Lord, I pray for your blessings. Every good thing comes from you and I ask that you would pour out your blessings on me. May you bless the work I do, bless the people I love, bless the life I live. But even more than that, 
Help me to be a blessing to others. Use me to bring joy, help, and hope to the people around me. Father, I ask for your divine protection. There are many dangers and problems in the world, but I know that you're my protector. You're my safe place, my shield. Keep me safe from harm, deliver me from evil, and keep me close to you. Lord, I am grateful that the Holy Spirit is my helper. Lord, may your Holy Spirit help me remember that when God is on my side, nothing can stand against me. I pray that the Holy Spirit will always remind me that nothing can take God's love away from me. Holy Spirit, in difficult times, may you remind me that nothing, not life or death, not angels or demons, not the things that worry me today, nor the things that scare me about the future can ever separate me from the love of God. May the Holy Spirit remind me that I am precious to God and help me understand who I am through Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, change me. Make me more like Jesus. Fill me with the fruits of your Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, help me to show the fruits of the Spirit in my life, not just for my own good, but also for the benefit of the people around me. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, for every person opening their heart to you right now, I ask that you fill them with your Holy Spirit and with your love. For anyone who needs strength to get through the day, Holy Spirit, may you give them strength and courage. For anyone who woke up feeling hurt or in pain, Holy Spirit, may you be their comforter. Help them to feel calm when their heart is worried. For the person who feels lost and needs some help figuring out what to do, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you be like a good friend, giving them leading and direction. Lord, thank you for hearing this prayer and for everyone who is listening. Thank you, Lord, for being my father, my friend, my helper, and my guide. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ask God to give you daily direction. When you seek God first, seeking guidance every single day, something happens. Your life will never be the same. Today, God's reassuring voice is saying to you, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean, not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. So it's not about knowing the way, but knowing the one who knows the way. But here's the catch. It's not automatic. It doesn't just happen like that. You have to do it on purpose while opening your heart to God. Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, verse 11, to pray this way. Give us this day our daily bread. Each day presents a new opportunity to tune in and say, Lord, what is your plan for today? Or Lord, what is the direction you would want me to take today? It's like having a spiritual compass that always points north. Admitting that we might not know the way, but trusting that he does, is the first step to unlocking doors that we didn't even know existed. Letting God take the lead in our lives is like trusting someone else to drive while we're in the passenger seat. It's about surrendering full control and trusting God. We're not trying to do everything ourselves, but instead, we're counting on God because He knows the way better than we do. This reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. By believing in this promise, we find genuine peace and freedom, knowing that God is guiding us towards the best for our lives each and every day. Now, 
It's tempting to draft the blueprints for our own lives and then just hope that God will just rubber stamp them. But this approach can lead us astray. It's like Noah trying to build an ark without God's specific instructions. It just wouldn't float, right? Instead, let's turn the tables. Before every decision, big or small, why not consult God first? If you acknowledge the leading of the Holy Spirit and there's peace in your heart, then you can move forward. If there's unease, maybe it's a sign to hold off. Remember when Abraham was told to leave his homeland in Genesis 12 verse 1. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Abraham didn't have a road map, but he had peace in his heart. He had faith in God's instructions. So, we need to seek God daily. It's about consistent fellowship. Think about it. Would you use last week's news to understand today's world events? No, you wouldn't. Similarly, our relationship with God is built on daily and sometimes hourly conversations. It's about keeping that channel open. When we seek God daily, we get clarity. Life is filled with decisions. Some are minor, but others have the potential to change the course of our lives. Navigating through these decisions can be overwhelming. However, by consistently consulting with God, we gain insights that are beyond our human understanding. He provides us with a unique perspective, guiding our steps and ensuring that we walk in the path He has laid out for us. Each day's challenges are met with a fresh word from Him, guiding us towards choices that align with His plan. Consistency in any relationship leads to intimacy. My friends, let me repeat that again. Consistency in any relationship leads to intimacy. The more we engage with God, the more we understand His character, His love, and His desires for us. This closeness builds trust. When we know God's heart, we find it easier to place our worries into His hands. Our faith grows as we witness His promises come to fulfillment day after day. A daily commitment to seeking Him ensures that our bond with God becomes unshakable, even in life's storms. Also, in a world filled with noise, uncertainty, and chaos, seeking God daily becomes our anchor. His presence brings a peace that surpasses human comprehension. When everything seems turbulent, a daily dose of His Word acts like a calming balm, assuring us that He is in control. Our spirits are rejuvenated, and we are reminded of the bigger picture, His eternal plan for us. It's this peace that helps us face challenges with courage and hope. With every interaction, God imparts wisdom. The world offers knowledge, but God gives wisdom, which is the ability to apply that knowledge correctly. By seeking Him daily, we tap into this divine wisdom, helping us to discern situations and react in ways that bring forth positive outcomes. This wisdom not only benefits us, but also those around us. It enables us to be beacons of light, offering godly counsel and solutions. In essence, seeking God daily is not a mere religious ritual. It's our lifeline. It keeps us connected to the source of our strength, love, and purpose. With every new sunrise, we're given an opportunity to draw closer, to lean in, and to be transformed by the richness of His presence. Let's look at the Israelites. In Exodus 16, verse 13, even when they were wandering and felt lost, God gave them daily provisions like quail. The Bible says, that evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. So this reminds us that God is concerned about our daily struggles, our victories, and everything in between. Are we sometimes trapped in our own past successes, 
thinking old methods will solve new challenges. We might think, this feels familiar, I know how to handle this. But King Solomon, in his wisdom, said in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. This means that there is a time to change our methods and our approach. Our world evolves rapidly. Holding onto the past or letting life pass by on autopilot can leave us in the dust. Thankfully, God's mercies are new every morning. Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23 assures us, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. If you've been following the same strategy for a while now, perhaps it's time to take another look at the guidebook. Perhaps God wants to do something new or something different in your life. Can you handle it? Paul reminds us in Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So let's be ready for change, refreshed daily by His Word and led by the Holy Spirit. In essence, life's journey isn't about sticking to what we know. It's about consistent guidance from the one who knows best. So as we navigate the twists and turns, remember, we have the best guidebook at our fingertips. Let's dive in and seek His guidance. Your divine compass awaits. Each day, it is very important to seek God's guidance. Talk to God first. Remember the tale of the Israelites and the golden calf. This can be found in Exodus 32 verses 1 to 4. And the scripture reads, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we would not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me, and all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron, and he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. We see here where Moses was away on Mount Sinai. And the Israelites grew impatient, rather than waiting and seeking guidance, they took matters into their own hands, resulting in regrettable decisions. Similarly, when we face challenges, it's not always about charging forward. Sometimes it's about pausing, reflecting, and seeking God's guidance. As we are reminded in Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean, not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths, instead of acting hastily. What if we took a moment to consult with God? Seeking His direction can steer us away from unnecessary conflicts and decisions we might later regret. Reflect upon David, a man after God's own heart. Even after defeating Goliath and many foes, he never assumed he knew best. Before every major battle or decision, he sought the Lord's counsel. But why did David do this? Wasn't he already an accomplished warrior? True. But he knew that God's perspective was infinitely more valuable than his past experiences. In our lives, we might think, I've done this before. I got this. But like David, we should remember that every challenge, while it might seem familiar, has its unique aspects. Seeking God's guidance ensures we're aligning our steps with His plans rather than our assumptions. Then there's the cautionary tale of Joshua and the deceptive Gibeonites. 
in Joshua chapters 9 and 10. Their trickery made them appear as allies from afar, but in reality, they were close neighbors. If only Joshua had sought God's wisdom. Their oversight meant years of unexpected alliances and challenges. What can we learn from this? Not everything is as it seems. The world can present us with golden opportunities that, without divine guidance, might turn out to be mere illusions. You've probably heard of the saying, all that glitters is not gold. This reminds me of a funny story where two women mistook a rat for a chihuahua. It looked innocent, even charming. But upon closer examination, its true nature was revealed. So, before inviting situations or chihuahuas into our lives, let's make sure they're genuinely what they appear to be. A quick check with our Heavenly Father can save a lot of heartaches. My friends, as we navigate the vast landscape of life, let's remember to seek God daily, not just in the big decisions, but in the smaller, seemingly insignificant ones too. Whether it's a business venture, a new relationship, or even a seemingly familiar challenge, God's wisdom is essential. If you've been relying solely on your understanding and experiences, perhaps it's time for a change. Today, I invite you to seek fresh guidance, a daily touch from God. By doing so, I believe that God will guide your steps, shield you from pitfalls, and lead you to a destiny filled with His blessings and favor. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, to you be all glory, honor, and praise. Today, I come before you with gratitude in my heart and hope for the day ahead. Give me this day my daily bread. I seek your forgiveness as I forgive those who trespass against me. I thank you for life and for your many blessings. Lord, I ask that you guide my thoughts, words, and actions today. Lead me in paths of righteousness and help me to be a beacon of light and love to those I encounter. Father, I pray that I remain rooted in your truth, equipped to face the challenges of the day with grace and courage. In the name of Jesus, I declare clarity for each step I take. I seek your wisdom in every decision I make, and I ask that your voice be the guiding light in my life. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke any confusion, hesitation, and uncertainty that tries to cloud my judgment. Lord, lead me away from any distractions, temptations, or deceptions that aim to lead me astray. I claim confidence, clarity, and guidance in the name of Jesus, knowing that you are directing my path. Lord, I ask that you bring complete healing to my body, mind, and soul. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Lord, I ask that you strengthen me, renew the right spirit within me, and bring me peace, which surpasses all understanding. Father, I seek your divine protection over my life and over the lives of my loved ones. I declare that everything is working for us and not against us. May you bless us in our going out and coming in. May you deliver us from all evil and shield us from negative influences. Lord, keep us safe from the snares of the enemy, as I declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father, I ask for your abundant blessings in my life. May you open doors for me, shower me with your favor, prosperity, and joy. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, Father, I am grateful for all the hearts that are surrendering to you right now. May every one of us feel the warmth of your embrace, the confidence 
of your guidance and the joy that comes from walking hand in hand with you daily. Father, help us not lean unto our own understanding, but to seek your leading and direction in everything we do. May your guiding hand be upon us all, giving us daily direction towards your perfect will. In the name of Jesus, I declare that your love, grace, mercies, blessings, and abundance will flow into our lives today. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want you to imagine a scene, something Jesus himself painted in Mark 4, verses 26 to 29. Picture a farmer cradling a small seed in the palm of his rough, worn hands. The setting sun casts long, stretching shadows over the waiting earth. Now, does this farmer parade around the town, showcasing his seed, talking about its potential or its possibilities? No. Instead, he walks to his field, finds a spot, and plants the seed there, hidden from the world's view. This is a secret, silent act of faith between him, the seed, and God. And then, in time, with nurturing care and patience, that little seed sprouts. It grows. It becomes a plant, bearing fruit that feeds many. That seed is much like our dreams, our plans, our goals. Today, I want to talk to you about a topic we don't often hear why you should never tell anyone what you are up to. Now, we live in a time when everything we do seems to be broadcasted. Some of us share our breakfast, our holidays, our good days and bad days on social media. And if it's not broadcasted on social media, it's shared within our social circles. But sometimes we talk too much. Have we ever stopped to ask ourselves, do I need to tell everyone everything? Well, I am here to tell you that telling everyone everything is not wise. You need to be careful about doing that. James 1 verse 19 reminds us, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Have you ever seen a baby bird in its nest, high up in a tree? When a baby bird is born, it's weak and can't even fly yet. It needs to be safe from things that could hurt it like cats, dogs, or even people. That's why birds build their nests in secret places. These hidden nests are where baby birds grow stronger, learn to fly, and become big birds. This is a bit like what the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 6. Jesus tells us, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Did you hear that? What does this mean for us? It's saying that our secret place, like the baby bird's nest, is a significant place. This secret place could be your room where you pray. It could be a quiet spot under a tree where you read your Bible. It could be inside your heart, where you talk to God. This secret place is away from the noise, the eyes, and the words of other people. It's just you and God in this secret place. You can grow. You can learn more about God. You can get stronger in your faith. Like the baby bird gets stronger in the nest. Not everybody needs to see this growth happening. Just like the baby bird doesn't invite everyone to see its nest. This growth is something special between you and God. So let's remember to spend time in our secret place with God. We don't need to tell everyone what we're doing or learning there. It's a special place where we can grow strong in our faith. And just like the baby bird, one day 
will be ready to fly. One day, you will be able to share your testimony or share a part of your journey. But God's timing matters here. Now, let's take a moment to look at a man named Nehemiah from the Bible. Nehemiah was a hard worker who was busy rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. One day, while he was working, some people tried to distract him. They called him to come down and stop his work. But Nehemiah knew that if he stopped his work to entertain them, his important work would not be finished. The scripture tells us in Nehemiah 6, verse 3, he said, So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? Nehemiah did not let himself get distracted. He knew his work was important. He did not tell everyone what he was doing or how he was doing it. He just stayed focused on his work. We can learn a lot from Nehemiah. Sometimes we allow people to distract us too easily. Sometimes when we tell people about our plans or what we are doing, they may try to distract us. They may not even understand or they may say things that make us feel bad or confused. But we could avoid all of that. This is why sometimes it may be a good idea to keep our plans to ourselves, keep out the distractions. It may hinder your success. Remember, when you have something important to do, it's okay to keep it between you and God. You don't have to share it with everyone, like Nehemiah. Stay focused on your work or goals and don't let others distract you. Keep working hard and remember that God sees your efforts even if no one else does. Do you recall in the Bible when Jesus healed a blind man at Bethsaida? It's in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. Then he came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. So we see here that after Jesus healed him, he told the man, Don't go into the town or tell anyone in the town. Jesus knew the right time to do things, and he also knew that sometimes it was best to keep things quiet. This is also a good lesson for us. Again, it shows us that not everything has to be told to everyone. Sometimes it's better to keep our plans or what we're doing a secret. Even Jesus, who did amazing things, sometimes chose to be discreet. Just like Jesus, we can be wise and decide when it's the right time to tell people about our plans. And when it's better to keep things quiet, we don't always have to let everyone know what we're up to. Sometimes it's better to just get on with our work and let what we do speak for itself. Remember, being wise means knowing when to speak and when to keep quiet. Not everyone needs to know everything we're planning or doing. So let's be wise, just like Jesus was. There's a beautiful line in the Bible. In Psalm 27, verse 14, it says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. This is a reminder for us to be patient to wait for God's perfect time. Just like how a flower doesn't bloom right after it's planted, our plans and dreams also take time to grow. God knows the best time for everything. We can trust Him. We don't have to rush or be in a hurry. It's okay to wait. It's okay to be patient. And just because we're waiting doesn't mean we have to tell everyone what we're waiting for. We don't have to let everyone know our every move. We can keep our plans to ourselves. And when the right time comes, our plans will happen. So let's be patient. 
Let's wait for God's perfect time. Let's not rush to tell everyone what we're planning. Let's trust God and let our plans happen in His time. Remember, good things take time, and God's time is always the best. Have you ever thought about what real success means? Is it when people applaud us? Or is it when we know we have done our best? The Bible, in Galatians 1 verse 10, tells us something important about this. It says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. This means that we should not work just to make people happy. We should not make plans or do things just so people will like us or think we are successful. The most important thing is that we do our best and that God is happy with us. This is what real success is. We don't need to show off. We just need to work hard and do our best. And remember, we're doing it for God, not for people. So, let's focus on doing our best. Let's work hard and make our plans without worrying about what others think, because real success is about pleasing God, not people. Now, in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 6, it says, Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So what is this verse saying to us? It is saying, we should not share our precious things, like our plans or other personal details, with people who won't value them. Sometimes we might have secret enemies, people who don't wish us well, but we may not know it. If we tell them our plans, they might use that information against us or even use it to harm us. And sometimes it may be the root cause of strife or envy. Do you remember the story of Samson found in the book of Judges chapter 16? Delilah persuaded Samson into revealing that the secret of his strength was his long hair. Samson told his secret to Delilah because he thought she loved him. But Delilah was secretly working with Samson's enemies. When Samson told her his secret, she used it to help the enemies capture Samson. This is an example of what can happen when we share our plans or secrets with the wrong people. So. We must be careful. We must be vigilant and wise. We should not tell everyone our plans or share personal details of our lives. We should ask God to help us know the people in our lives who want the best for us. These are the people who we can sometimes share with. But it's often safer to keep our plans a secret until they are ready to be shown to the world. Don't hinder your own progress or block your own blessings by sharing too much with the wrong people. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Dear Heavenly Father, you are great. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Lord, your wisdom and power are unmatched. I praise you and glorify your holy name. I come before your throne of grace today, thankful for your grace and mercy towards me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your love for us, and I am grateful for your presence in our lives. Father, you are my guide. You are my protector, my comforter, and my strength. Lord, as I journey through life, I lift up all my plans, my dreams, and my ambitions to you. I pray for the wisdom and discernment to know when to reveal my plans and when to keep them to myself. Direct my steps, dear Lord, and may you help me to make decisions that bring glory and honor 
to your name. May my actions, my words, and my decisions be pleasing to you, reflecting your love, your wisdom, and your righteousness. Lord, as I also bring the people that I care about before you today, I pray for your arms of protection over us. Shield us from distractions, unnecessary criticisms, and any schemes of the enemy that are meant to bring us down. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I stand firm against any plans of the enemy to distract or discourage us, and I rebuke such plans in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I cover myself and my loved ones with the precious blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over our plans, our dreams, our health, our finances, and our hopes. I declare that they are safe and secure in your hands. Lord, I come against every spirit of fear and doubt that threatens to pull me away from your will. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of discouragement as I place my trust and confidence in you. Lord, I thank you that those that are with me are more than those that are against me. Lord, I am grateful that you are always by my side and that you will guide protect and bless me in all my endeavors. Father, I also pray for patience to wait for your perfect timing in all things. I rebuke the spirit of impatience in the name of Jesus. Lord, I am thankful that your timing is perfect and that in your time, everything will fall into place beautifully and perfectly. Lord, I thank you for a deeper understanding of what true success really means. May my loved ones and I never seek validation from the world, but from you, our God. Lord, help us to strive to please you in all that we do. I declare that as we work diligently and trust in you, success will be our portion according to your will. Father, you are my rock my fortress, and my deliverer. I love you, Lord, and I surrender to your perfect will. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. I pray all this in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our God has infinite wisdom and power. And so I encourage you to let go of your worries and fears and leave the things you can't control to God. Have you ever tried to control something and realized that you just can't? Imagine you're in a tiny boat and you're stuck in the middle of a big, scary storm. You have no power to stop the storm. But what if you knew someone who could? Our lives are often like that. We find ourselves in situations we can't control like the storm, but sometimes we often forget that we have a choice. It may not appear like you have a choice, but you do. We can worry and try to fix things ourselves, or we can trust in the one who has power over everything, even the storm. As humans, we love to be in charge. It makes us feel safe and powerful. However, we must understand our limits. God made the world and everything in it, he is the one in control, not us. But we can find comfort in knowing we're part of God's grand plan. Job 26 verse 7 reminds us that God stretches out the north over the void and hangs the earth on nothing. Our God is all-powerful. We all know that life can be tricky. With surprises around every corner, the Bible reminds us in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 that everything in life has its own time. This means there are things happening that we just can't control or predict. We can't control the weather, can we? And just like the weather, some things in life are beyond our control. That's just how it is. It's natural to feel like you want to be in control of everything. We like to feel safe and secure and being in control. 
seems to offer that. But the truth is, we can't control everything. No, we can't. There are things in life that are simply beyond our reach. When we try to control everything, we only end up tired and stressed. This is because we are human and we have limits. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says there is a time for everything. Sometimes the time comes for us to let go of our need for control and let God take over. Let go and let God. So why should we let God take control? God's wisdom and power are beyond what we can imagine. Unlike us, God isn't limited by time or space. Psalm 147 verse 5 says, His understanding is limitless. He knows the beginning from the end and everything in between. He knows what's best for us even when we can't see it. We often face things we don't understand, and that's okay. We can be sure that God knows what He is doing. His ways are higher than ours, as we learn in Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Surrendering doesn't mean we've lost or given up. It means we have faith in God. When we stop trying to control everything and trust God, we show our belief in His great power and wisdom. The Bible is filled with people who trusted God during tough times. Let's look at the story of Jehoshaphat, as told in 2 Chronicles 20. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, was terrified when vast armies came against him. But instead of trying to control the situation himself, he turned to God. He prayed, saying, We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Then, led by their faith, Jehoshaphat and his people went out to meet the armies. Instead of fighting, they sang praises to God, and God took control. The enemy armies became confused and destroyed each other. Jehoshaphat and his people didn't have to fight at all. They trusted God and saw his power at work. When we trust God, we're showing our faith in him. Let's look at another story, the story of King Hezekiah in 2 Kings 20. He was very sick, so sick that the prophet Isaiah told him he would die. But Hezekiah turned to God in prayer, trusting him even in the face of death. And you know what? God heard his prayer and added 15 more years to his life. Just like Hezekiah, when we trust God in the face of the uncontrollable, we allow his divine plan to unfold in our lives. That's when miracles will start to happen right before our very eyes. When we trust God with things we can't control, we can feel a peace that's hard to explain. It's a peace that is more than we can understand. And even though we may face difficult times, God promises us peace in our hearts. Philippians 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our peace comes from knowing that the God who made the universe, the God who set the stars in the sky and knows each one by name, is the same God who watches over us. He knows our struggles and our worries. He sees our tears and he cares about what we're going through. Psalms 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. When we let go and trust God, we can sleep peacefully even when the world around us is in chaos. We can face tomorrow without fear, knowing that whatever happens, God is with us. We can walk through the fire and not be burned, and through the waters and not be drowned. It's no wonder the songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Now the peace we get from trusting God doesn't mean there won't be storms. It doesn't mean that we won't face difficulties or go through hard times. But it does mean that in the middle of those storms and difficulties, we can have a calmness, a stillness, a peace that is not of this world. Because our trust is not in this world, but in the God who made it and knowing that he is in control knowing that he will never fail us 
gives us a peace that's hard to explain, but wonderful to experience. God's love for us never fails. And he is always true to his word. The Bible is filled with examples of God's unfailing love and faithfulness. Remember the story of the Israelites in the wilderness. After they were freed from slavery in Egypt, they complained and turned away from God, yet God remained faithful. He provided manna, bread from heaven, for them to eat. He demonstrated his power and love, even when the people were faithless. This reminds us that God will not fail us. He loves us more than we can know. It also means that whatever God promises, he does. If God says he will do something, you can be sure that he will do it. It's like if your best friend promises to help you, you believe them because you know they always keep their promises. God is like that, but even much better. Whenever he makes a promise in the Bible, he always keeps it. Now, when we surrender our worries to God, we can do so through prayer. This is how we talk to God. When we pray, we can tell God about all our worries and fears. And God, because he loves us, gives us peace. 1 Peter 5, verse 7 says, Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Surrendering our worries to God in prayer means that we stop trying to deal with everything by ourselves. It means that we trust God to help us. We say to God, I can't do this by myself. I'm giving my worries to you. Lord, please help me. When we do that, we stop carrying all that heavy worry by ourselves. We share it with God, we give it to God. And because God is so big and strong, he can handle any worry we have. And the best part, is that God wants to help us with our worries because he loves us so much. So prayer is like saying, God, I trust you with my worries. I need your help. And when we do that, we often start to feel better. It's like a weight being lifted off our shoulders. Let's also consider the idea of victory through surrender. It may seem strange. Victory. How can we win by giving up? But in God's kingdom, surrendering is how we gain victory. When we stop trying to control everything and trust God, we become victorious. That's how we conquer fear, worry, and stress. Let's look at the story of the Israelite city of Jericho in the book of Joshua. The city walls were too strong to be conquered by force. God instructed Joshua and the Israelites to march around the city for seven days, and on the seventh day to blow their trumpets and shout. By the world's standards, this plan made no sense. But the Israelites surrendered their understanding and followed God's command. When they did, the mighty walls of Jericho fell down, and the Israelites won a victory that they couldn't have achieved on their own. In our lives, too, there are walls that we can't bring down by our own efforts. These might be problems or challenges that we can't solve, no matter how hard we try. Or it may be a person we can't change or a situation we can't control. Whenever we find ourselves in such situations, we tend to feel stuck, helpless, or discouraged. We may try everything we can think of to fix it, but nothing works. We are just left feeling more stressed, worried, and tired. It's like trying to open a door that's locked tight. But when we surrender these situations to God, he can do what we can't. Imagine God has the key to that locked door. When we hand over our problems to him, he unlocks the door. Now this doesn't mean that everything suddenly becomes perfect, but it does mean that we're not alone in facing our problems. God is with us, working on our problems in ways we can't even imagine. Once we surrender our situations to God, we might not see changes right away. God's timing is different from ours. But one thing is certain, God is working on our behalf. His ways are always better than ours. And just like a parent who stops their child from touching a hot stove, 
God sees the big picture and knows what's best for us. So in those moments when we feel like we're banging on a locked door, remember this. God holds the key. We only need to hand our problems over to Him. Trust in His perfect timing and believe in His infinite wisdom. When we do that, we find that God will do what we can. From today onwards, let's learn to leave the things we can't control to God. He will never fail us. Give it to Jesus. Remember Jehoshaphat, the manna in the wilderness, and the walls of Jericho. These stories teach us that when we surrender to God, He takes over. And when God takes over, miracles happen. Remember, God loves you. He cares for you. He is wiser and stronger than we can ever be. Trust Him with your worries. Surrender them to Him. Pray to Him. And in Him, you will find victory and peace. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, I praise you and I give you all the glory. I exalt you, O Lord, above everything else. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness and your mercies that are new every morning. Lord, I come to you seeking your face and asking for your divine intervention. Father, help me to recognize and understand the limits of my control. Lord, help me to leave all things in your capable hands, for you are the creator, you are the sustainer, and the master of the universe. Lord, I declare in Jesus' name that I will not be crippled by my fears or worries. I declare that I will not allow stress to dominate my life. Instead, I will let faith lead the way. By the blood of Jesus, I break every chain of anxiety and worry that binds me. I rebuke every spirit of fear and uncertainty in the name of Jesus. Father, I trust in your infinite wisdom and power. I thank you, Lord, that you see the whole picture and your plans for my life are perfect. Teach me the art of surrender, dear Lord. Teach me to let go and let God. Help me to trust you more, to give you full control, and to leave things to you. Lord, I pray for your protection over my mind, my heart, and my soul. Protect me from negative thoughts and fill me with your peace. Lord, I thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. I rebuke every spirit of unrest, strife, bitterness, and division in my relationships. In the name of Jesus, I declare peace, love, and harmony over my relationships. I come against every spirit that seeks to steal my peace and joy. In the name of Jesus, I claim victory over the battles in my life. I declare victory over every sickness and disease. I declare victory over lack and financial debts and losses. In you, Lord, I find strength and hope. I hold on to that promise that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, I declare that I am more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me or my loved ones shall prosper. I declare that I am an overcomer not by my power, but by the power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, guide me each day to live according to your perfect will. Open my eyes to see your work in my life and to understand your plans for me. Help me to trust you more and to surrender to you completely. I plead the blood of Jesus over every area of my life. May it cleanse me, protect me, and guide me. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every negative force, every stronghold, and every power of darkness that seeks to derail me from your path. I rebuke every spirit that seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Lord, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your faithfulness. I surrender all to you, knowing that you will never fail me. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just as Psalm 91 assures us, even in the darkest hours, there is a shelter waiting for you, a hope that never fades, and a promise that you are always protected under His wings. Today, God is offering this special promise to you. I'm also going to pray a powerful prayer with you, calling on God to be your refuge and strength in the name of Jesus. So, watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessings of this prayer. Think about this for a moment. What is the deepest desire of the human heart when life feels uncertain, when dangers and trials loom, when fears creep in? Do you know? This is it. We yearn for refuge, protection, and comfort. We long for a safe dwelling place where we can find shelter from the storms of life. But you need not despair, for we have a mighty fortress and an eternal home in the shelter of the Most High. Psalm 91 stands as a source of divine assurance in times of trouble, promising that as we abide in the Lord, no evil shall conquer us. This powerful psalm still has much relevance and power today, as it did when it was first written years ago. So the question is, how can we all unlock the power of this psalm? Are the promises of Psalm 91 just for some people? Before we dig deeper, let us quickly examine each verse. In Psalm 91 verse 1, it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Our shelter and shadow of protection is in the Most High God. We all face storms in life, but God is our refuge and shelter, ready to cover us with His wings when troubles come. I encourage you to run to Him first when you need protection. Verse 2 tells us, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Our faith and trust in God is what allows us to say He is our refuge. It's not just knowing about God, but it is putting our complete trust in Him that brings the benefits of this psalm to life. So you should ask yourself, do I truly trust Him in all situations, or do I sort my troubles and decide which ones are too big for God to handle and which ones aren't. Verses 3 to 4 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. This is telling us that God will deliver us from traps and dangers. He will cover us with his feathers. But know that God doesn't always keep us from going through difficulties, but he promises to be with us in them, protecting us supernaturally, even when we can't see how. Have faith that he is shielding you. Verses 5 to 6 assures us, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. So we can rest assured that no evil shall conquer us, because God is our defense. Believe that no weapon formed against you can ultimately succeed or overpower you when God is on your side. Stand firm in that confidence, no matter what. Verses 7 to 8 says, a thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. This is reminding us that God faithfully protects those who love Him, even in midst of judgment. Our relationship with Christ ensures we are covered, cling close to Him, obey His words to abide under His protection. Verses 9 to 13 reminds us, Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, 
nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion, and the cobra, the young lion, and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. This is a promise of supernatural protection and care over every part of our lives. When we belong to God, thank Him daily for being your shelter. Verse 14 says, Because He has set His love upon me, therefore I will deliver Him. I will set Him on high, because He has known my name. Our God delivers and protects because we know and trust in His name. Our faith in who God is and what He can do allows us to access the deliverance spoken of in this verse. Strengthen your knowledge of His nature and character. Trust in Him. And verses 15 to 16 tells us, He shall call upon me, and I will answer Him. I will be with Him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. These verses express God's unwavering commitment to us. When we call on God, he is there. When we reach out to him in prayer, not only does he promise to answer, but he also assures us of his constant presence during hard times, delivering us from those challenges. He blesses us with a fulfilling life, while revealing the depth of His saving grace. So run to the Lord instantly, in prayer, when you need help or protection. He promises to be there right beside you. Our God is faithful. Sometimes all you need to say is, Help, Lord. Call out to God. He promises to answer and deliver you. So when we put it all together, let us unlock the benefits of Psalm 91. What does Psalm 91 really offer? I will discuss five powerful promises of this psalm. Number one, it promises divine shelter. Notice that Psalm 91 opens with these profound words. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What a beautiful promise for our weary souls, for those with heavy hearts. The shelter of God Almighty provides not only physical protection from danger, but also mental and spiritual refuge from fear and worry. So no matter what storms may come, God offers himself as a safe hiding place. In our modern world, we often grapple with economic uncertainty with many false realities in mainstream and social media, with political divisions, public health crises, and so much more. As a result of all this, the need for shelter and refuge is as crucial as ever, but the promises of Psalm 91 remain constant. If we abide under the wings of our Lord, He promises to cover us with His feathers, and under His wings we will find refuge. His faithfulness is our shield and buckler. When we dwell in the Most High, we can declare with confidence that God alone is our refuge, our fortress, our God, in whom we trust. Sheltered safely in His presence, we need not fear the terrors of the night or the arrows that fly by day. Verse 9 reiterates God's sheltering presence. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. Verse 4 also assures us that under His wings we will find refuge. Then verse 10 expands on this thought. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. This is a remarkable promise of supernatural protection and safety for those abiding close to the Lord. Number 2. It offers us the ultimate shield against fear. Our world today is marked by fear and anxiety over many things, including our future, our health, finances, relationships, and public safety, just to name a few. But Psalm 91 addresses these fears 
that can dominate our thoughts. Verse 3. Promises that God will deliver us from the deadly pestilence and plague. In addition to physical illness, we could also apply this verse symbolically. God can deliver us from contagious and harmful thoughts or emotions. Further on, verse 5 also echoes this promise of protection from the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. So God is our ultimate shield against everything that seeks to instill worry and fear. Verse 6 expands on this theme of protection, stating, The plague will not come near our dwelling, offering safety even in the midst of widespread chaos. While the sources of our anxiety and stress may be different than in ancient times, God's power to protect His children remains unchanged. Number 3. It offers angelic guardianship. Psalm 91. Verses 11 to 12 paints a beautiful picture of God commanding His angels concerning us to guard us in all our ways and bear us up in their hands, lest we strike our feet against a stone. Those who take refuge in the Lord have heavenly protectors attending their every step, intervening supernaturally. Though we may not visibly see their work, believers can take great encouragement that powerful angelic beings are on assignment to provide guidance, protection, and rescue us from harm. When we feel uncertain of the path ahead, we can call upon God to allow these guardians to light our way and clear obstacles that would cause us to falter in our faith. Number four, it promises triumph over trials. Psalm 91 also uses symbolic language to describe the power that God gives His children to overcome hardship. Verse 13 declares you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Therefore, you need to start declaring that the enemy is under your feet, because he is. And he knows that. It's just for you to know also and to act accordingly. For modern believers, our lions and serpents likely take different forms, such as an abusive relationship, addiction, discrimination, depression, or religious persecution, among others. But through faith in God's unfailing protection, we can have the courage to face these challenges, refusing to give in when faced with adversity. By relying on the strength of the Almighty, we can crush these obstacles beneath our feet. And number five, it offers the power of relationship. Now, listen to this. While Psalm 91 makes magnificent promises, the Psalm itself clarifies that its provisions are not unconditional. Two prerequisites for resting in God's refuge are mentioned. Its promises are for those who know His name as mentioned in verse 14, and those who love Him, which is also mentioned in verse 14. So a personal relationship with God is essential to unlocking the power of Psalm 91. Its promises are not for everyone, yet everyone has an equal opportunity to be able to gain access to the benefits of these promises. So. Amidst the many messages out there, proclaiming the power of Psalm 91, as if it is generally for everyone, we must discern the truth. This psalm is indeed a potent passage, but it specifically promises protection to those who truly know and love God. Understanding God's name means really getting to know who He is on a deep level. Just knowing that God exists isn't enough. We have to get close to Him and truly learn about Him. Loving God isn't just doing things for Him. It's truly honoring and pleasing Him in all we do. When we both know and love Him, that's when we can truly unlock the full power of abiding in His shelter. That's when we can unlock the power of Psalm 91. So if you're listening and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't yet come to know and love 
God deeply, don't worry. The journey to a close relationship with Him is open to everyone. Salvation has come to you, and you can accept Jesus today. Watch until the end, and I will pray a special salvation prayer with you. So what is the practical application of all this? How can we apply Psalm 91 to our lives? Firstly, make it a part of your daily refuge. Followers of Christ should make Psalm 91 a part of their daily spiritual meditation. Reading, reciting, or meditating on these magnificent promises sets our minds on His protection amidst the day's uncertainties. Ending each day, reflecting on these divine assurances, also allows peace and comfort to carry us into rest. Let this psalm soak deep into your soul. Write its verses on your sticky notes, stuck to your mirrors, doors, desk, or anywhere that will keep your eyes fixed on the words throughout your daily routine. There is no better way to claim the psalm's refuge than by constantly renewing our minds with its truths. Romans 10 verse 7 reminds us. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Secondly, by answering the call to trust. Trust is an act of the will, a deliberate dependence on God's faithfulness, despite our feelings or circumstances. When faced with uncertainty, anxiety tries to shrink our perception of God. But you can combat fear with radical trust. Choose daily to believe His promises over your perceptions. Recall past situations where He protected and delivered you. Take refuge under His wings until confidence in His care becomes bigger than your worry. Thirdly, by embracing angelic help, begin acknowledging out loud. When divine guidance and protection show up in your life, when a coincidence redirects you from danger, or a call or text arrives just when you need encouragement, begin to recognize it as a possible angelic intervention. Set your mind to spot the angels God promised to dispatch around your path. Use your spiritual eyes and senses to sense their presence. You may never physically see these guardians, but their handiwork is all around for those with eyes to see it. And lastly, by the assurance of answered prayer, you should bring Psalm 91 boldly before God's throne of grace in prayer. Pray its verses out loud as declarations of faith over your mind, body, family, and circumstances. Allow each promise to fuel your requests. Then watch expectantly for these prayers to be answered, knowing heaven is mobilized on your behalf. Write down and share testimonies of God's protection with others. Before you know it, you will have lots of testimonies to share. So, Psalm 91, in just 16 verses, forms a powerful declaration of radical reliance upon our loving Creator. Its promises reveal that despite the ever-changing threats we face, the refuge of dwelling close to God's heart remains constant. Nothing can shake His resolve to protect those who take shelter under His wings. May the words of this psalm settle deeply into our hearts, reminding us daily of God's faithfulness, unwavering love and protection. As we claim its promises each morning or each day, may it be a reminder to us to find refuge under God's wings. Let's not just read it, let's live it, finding in it the protection, peace, and purpose that our souls so deeply desire. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, Creator of heaven and earth, I praise you and I give you all the glory for you are my shield and buckler. You are my hiding place and secret place, dear Lord. Father, I come before you today with a heart full of gratitude. Believing in the promises of Psalm 91, I declare in the name of Jesus 
that I dwell in your shelter and rest in your shadow. Lord, you are my refuge and strength, my fortress, and in you alone I trust. Lord, I thank you for your divine shelter. I declare that no harm will befall me and no disaster will come near me or my household. In the mighty name of Jesus, for you command your angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. They lift me up in their hands, so I won't strike my foot against a stone. Lord, may you deliver me from every negative influence, every whisper of doubt, and every shadow of fear. Lord, deliver me from all evil, from every pestilence that walks in darkness, from all arrows that flies, from all destruction, and from all terrors of the night. Father, I declare that in the face of danger, I will tread upon the lion and the cobra. I will trample the great lion and the serpent underfoot, because I know your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke any force that rises against this promise and any voice that seeks to sow doubt in my mind. Lord, your faithfulness is my armor and protection. May you protect me from dangers seen and unseen. I will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I declare that I am shielded from the pestilence that stalks in the darkness and the plague that destroys at midday. Lord, I thank you for reminding me that a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Father, may you pour out favor and abundance upon my life, on my work, my home, and my dreams. May your goodness chase me and your mercy cover all that concerns me. Lord, I claim your promise of long life and salvation to those who dwell in your shelter and trust in you. May I experience the richness of long life, not just in years, but also in joy, purpose, and fulfillment. Father, may my time on earth be a testimony to your goodness and grace, reflecting the depth of your love and the power of your protection. Father, I pray for my loved ones. May they too find refuge under your wings. Lord, may you draw them close and let them experience your divine protection, love, and grace. Mighty God, I ask that you bless me and my loved ones. Bless us in our coming in and our going out. Precious Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I thank you for every person that is opening their heart to you right now. I pray that the assurances of Psalm 91 become our reality. May we walk in confidence, secure in your promise, and surrounded by your love. May our lives become testimonies of your faithfulness and protection. Lord, I thank you for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Don't block your blessings. Remember, our God is a God of abundance, and he desires nothing more than to bless us beyond our wildest dreams. So let's not stand in our own way. Embrace his will his love, and his blessings. Today, God wants to bless you with an abundant life. We're also going to pray a powerful prayer with you, calling on God to bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessings of this prayer. My dear friends, there is a sad reality that we must face. In our walk with God, sometimes, Without even realizing it, we become our own stumbling blocks. Sometimes we wonder why the heavens seem silent or why our prayers feel unanswered. We pour out our hearts in prayer, waiting and yearning for a sign, an answer or even just a whisper to assure us that he hears. We question, have we been forgotten? Is there something we've done wrong? 
But the truth is, blessings from God flow constantly like a river. Quite often, it is our actions, our choices, and our attitudes that may be preventing these blessings from reaching us. You see, God's love for us is so vast and His desire to bless us is so immense that His blessings are always flowing, much like a mighty river that never runs dry. This river is full of healing, hope, breakthroughs, and miracles, all waiting to enrich our lives. But, just as a river can be hindered by obstructions, sometimes it's our own behaviors, decisions, and even the state of our hearts that act like barriers, blocking these blessings. We might not even be aware of these obstructions, as they often masquerade as everyday choices or deep-rooted attitudes. Today, let us dig deeper into understanding these barriers and how we can restore the free flow of God's grace. In our journey of life, God continuously weaves threads of grace, favor, and love for each one of us. But it's up to us to recognize and receive these threads, to allow them to enrich the patterns of our lives. Today, we will look at five barriers that can block your blessings and breakthroughs. Number one, unforgiveness and holding on to grudges. Think of unforgiveness like holding on to a heavy rock in our hand. Day after day, that rock gets harder and harder to carry. It slows us down and tires us out. That's what holding grudges does to us. It's like that heavy rock, making our life harder than it should be. The Bible tells us clearly in Matthew 6, verse 14, For if you forgive others when they do wrong to you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. This means that if we want God to forgive us, we need to forgive others. It's a simple idea, but sometimes it may be hard to do depending on the situation. But we can all choose to forgive, no matter how difficult. Do what God wants you to do, and God will take care of everything else. Now let's journey back to an often overlooked story in the Bible. The story of Esau and Jacob. These two brothers had every reason to hold on to grudges. Jacob, with the help of their mother, deceived his older brother Esau to snatch away his birthright and blessing. The hurt and betrayal led to years of separation and bitterness. Esau was so angry that he even thought of killing Jacob. But over time, something transformational happened. When they finally met again, instead of anger and revenge. This is what happened. Genesis 33, verse 4, says, But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. This reunion shows the power of forgiveness and how it can turn years of bitterness into a moment of love and reconciliation. Yet, it's vital to understand that forgiveness is not just for the person who hurt us. It's also for our benefit. It sets us free. Holding on to anger, resentment, and grudges is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to get hurt. It affects our well-being, our relationship with God and others, and prevents us from experiencing the fullness of God's blessings. When we forgive, we are not saying that what the other person did is okay, but we are releasing them from our judgment and letting God be the judge. In doing so, we tear down the walls that block our blessings and pave the way for healing, peace, and spiritual prosperity. After all, every time we recite the Lord's Prayer, we are reminded, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In essence, every prayer is a call to embrace forgiveness and let go of the chains that hold us back from God's divine blessings. Number two, doubt and lack of faith. Doubt can cloud our spiritual vision, making it hard to recognize and appreciate the miracles that God manifests in our lives daily. Like a dense fog, 
it distorts our perception and direction. When Jesus beckoned Peter to walk on water, it was pure, unwavering faith that enabled him to take those initial miraculous steps. However, the instant doubt seeped in, he began to sink, as James 1 verse 6 tells us. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. This wavering and unstable state of mind keeps us from fully embracing God's blessings. Imagine trying to paint a beautiful picture, but every time you're about to make a stroke, you second guess the color choice, the brush size, or the direction of the stroke. Because of this, the canvas remains incomplete and the image never fully comes to life. Similarly, in our spiritual journey, when we're constantly doubting or lacking faith, we prevent our relationship with God from reaching its full, vibrant potential. We end up with a patchy, unclear image of His plan for us, rather than the masterpiece He envisioned. In the Bible, Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This means that even if we can't see something, we can believe it's there. Just like we believe the wind is there when we feel it on our face, even if we can't see it. Faith is believing in God and His promises, even if we can't see Him. There's a story in the Bible about a man named Barak in the book of Judges, chapters 4 to 5. Deborah, a prophetess, told Barak that God wanted him to lead an army against their enemies, and God would ensure they win. But Barak doubted. He said he would only go if Deborah went with him. This showed his lack of faith. Because of this, Deborah said that the honor of victory would go to a woman instead of him. And that's exactly what happened. A woman named Jael was the one who defeated the enemy's leader. This story shows what can happen when we doubt or don't have faith. We might miss out on the good things God has planned for us. We can miss out on our blessings. So doubt, as a human emotion, is natural. All of us, at different moments, grapple with questions or uncertainties. But in these times, it's crucial to turn to God, seeking His wisdom and guidance. Embracing faith, especially in uncertain times, illuminates our path, providing clarity and purpose. It's like having the right colors and vision to complete our painting, revealing a beautiful divine masterpiece. God is ever ready to guide, but it's our faith and trust in Him that transforms His guidance into blessings in our lives. Number three, disobedience and straying from God's path. Not obeying God can cause you to lose your way. Think about a time when someone gave you a map or directions to a place, but instead of following it, you decided to go your own way, thinking it might be a shortcut, but soon, you found yourself lost, wishing you had just stuck to the original path. This is similar to our spiritual journey. God gives us a map through His words in the Bible, guiding us on the right path. But when we decide to go our own way, not listen to Him, we often find ourselves feeling lost and far from Him. God is clear about obedience in the Bible. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 22 it says, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. This means that God values our obedience more than any gift or ritual we can offer. He wants us to listen to Him and follow His ways because He knows it's the best for us. A story in the Bible that's not often talked about, but is very relevant to our topic of disobedience, is about King Saul and the Amalekites. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, God gave Saul clear instructions to destroy everything belonging to the Amalekites because of the harm they had done to the Israelites. But instead, Saul spared their king, Hagag, and kept some of the best livestock. He thought he could use these animals as sacrifices to God, 
But God wasn't pleased because Saul didn't follow his exact instructions. Even though Saul thought he was doing a good thing by saving the animals for sacrifice, he missed the point. Obedience to God was more important. As a result of his disobedience, God no longer desired for King Saul to remain as king, and his reign took a tragic turn. When we stray from God's path and don't listen to him, it's like we're missing out on the best route he has planned for us. God's path is always for our good, even if we don't see it right away. By being obedient and sticking to his directions, we avoid many problems and heartaches. It's essential to always check in with God, read his words, and pray for guidance. Just like that map or set of directions, God's word will always lead us to the right place, full of blessings and peace. So, let's make an effort to stay on God's path and enjoy the journey he has prepared for us. Number four, pride and self-reliance. Here, I am talking about the tendency to trust ourselves more than God. Consider that you have a puzzle and you're trying to fit a piece where it doesn't belong. No matter how much you push or twist it, it just won't fit. But instead of looking for the right piece, you keep forcing the wrong one, thinking you know better. This is what happens when we let pride control us and rely too much on ourselves. We try to force things our way, even if it's not the right way, instead of listening to God's guidance. The Bible has clear words about pride. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. This verse is a reminder that when we think too highly of ourselves, we're setting ourselves up for trouble. God wants us to be humble, to realize that we don't have all the answers and to lean on him. Let's look at the story of King Uzziah in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Uzziah became king at a young age and for many years he did what was right in God's eyes. He was successful and powerful, but with this power, pride started to creep into his heart he began to think he could do anything, even tasks reserved for priests. One day he went into the temple to burn incense, a job only the priests were allowed to do. When warned by the priests, instead of listening and humbling himself, Uzziah became angry, but God saw his pride. Uzziah broke out with leprosy right there and then. Uzziah's pride led to his downfall. Trusting in ourselves and thinking we don't need God's guidance is a dangerous path. It's like refusing to ask for directions when we're lost, just because we're too proud to admit we don't know the way. So some of us need to admit that we don't know everything. Some of us are too proud, but God is always waiting for us to reach out, to ask him for help. He wants to guide us and lead us to the best paths. The key is to be humble, to admit when we need help, and to trust in God's wisdom over our own. By setting aside our pride and leaning on God, we open up a world of blessings, peace, and true success in our lives. Remember, it's okay to not have all the answers. As long as we know where to turn for guidance, don't let pride block your blessings. And number five, Neglect of prayer and praise. This is like drifting away from our safe harbor. Think about being in a boat and floating in a vast ocean. Near the shoreline is a safe harbor where you anchor every day. It provides protection, guidance, and a sense of peace. But gradually, you start neglecting the anchor. One day, you skip it, thinking it's fine to drift a little. The next day, you do the same. Slowly, you find yourself far out at sea, adrift, and the once familiar harbor is barely visible. This is similar to our relationship with God. When we consistently engage in prayer and praise to God, we anchor ourselves to His presence. But neglecting these practices is like neglecting that anchor, 
letting ourselves drift farther from God's protective harbor. The Bible is filled with calls for constant communication with God. In Philippians 4, verse 6, we are reminded, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. The scripture underscores the importance of not only praying, but also offering praise and thanks, affirming our trust in Him. By doing so, we strengthen our anchor, ensuring we stay close to our spiritual harbor. The story of Jonah nicely reflects the significance of consistent communication with God. When God first called Jonah to go to Nineveh, Jonah ran away, opting to board a ship going in the opposite direction. He tried to escape God's call and, in doing so, found himself in the middle of a massive storm as he neglected his duty and his connection to God. He drifted further away from his spiritual harbor. It was only when he was in the belly of a great fish, having prayed and repented, that he was set back on the right path. Jonah's story is a vivid illustration of what can happen when we neglect our spiritual duties like prayer and praise, and how we can always turn back to God, our steadfast harbor, no matter how far we've drifted. In our busy lives, it's easy to think we can skip a prayer session today, or skip a daily devotion, or miss a moment of praise to God tomorrow. Maybe you're thinking that dealing with kids and grandkids as they go back to school is now top priority, or dealing with my other family or work obligations is more important right now. Or you're probably just thinking, I don't have enough time to spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes with God every day. But every time we do this, it's like allowing our boat to drift a bit further from that safe harbor. Over time, we may find ourselves lost in the vastness of life's challenges. Prayer and praise are more than just expression of devotion. They are also conduits of blessings. Just as the rain nourishes the earth, leading to blossoming flowers and thriving crops, consistent prayer and heartfelt praise open the floodgates of heaven, allowing God's blessings to flow into our lives. When we communicate with God through prayer, we align our desires with His will, making way for blessings tailored to our truest needs. On the other hand, praise is our acknowledgement of God's sovereignty, our genuine gratitude for His works. When we praise, we recognize and celebrate the blessings we've already received, no matter how big or small. We also recognize and celebrate the blessings and breakthroughs that we expect to receive. This grateful heart, in turn, attracts even more blessings. Psalm 67, verses 5 to 6, beautifully shows this. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. The scripture clearly links praise with the outpouring of blessings. So by embracing a life rich in prayer and overflowing with praise, we not only anchor ourselves to God, but also position ourselves to be in the direct path of His abundant blessings. Now remember this. As we journey through life, let us be wise. May we recognize the barriers in our lives, remove them and realign ourselves with God's purpose, thereby ensuring that we do not block, but rather embrace the blessings He has for us. Let today be the day of transformation of openness and of abundant blessings. Our Creator, in His infinite wisdom, gave us free will, and with that comes the responsibility of the choices we make. If our hearts and minds are filled with doubt, negativity, or distractions, it becomes hard for God's blessings to find their rightful place in our lives. The ever-flowing river is always there. We just need to be open and ready to receive from it. Don't block your blessings. Let them flow. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me 
so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God, Heavenly Father, Creator of all things in heaven and earth. I exalt your mighty name. I thank you, Lord, that you are the giver of all good gifts and the fountain of abundant blessings. Lord, today I approach your throne with a humble heart, asking for your forgiveness for the times when I knowingly or unknowingly placed barriers in the path of your blessings. Please cleanse my heart and guide me to always remain open and receptive to your abundant grace. Father, may you forgive me of my trespasses, even as I forgive all those who trespass against me. In the name of Jesus, I declare that every barrier in my life, every stumbling block hindering my blessings, be uprooted and cast away. Every chain of doubt, fear, and unbelief that binds me, I break them now, in Jesus' name. I rebuke spiritual laziness, every spirit of negativity, of resentment or pride that might be working against my spiritual growth. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that everything is working for me and not against me. Father, may I walk in the fullness of your blessings. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings which I have already received and for the blessings to come. Lord, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for your divine protection. And I thank you for your amazing grace and goodness. Lord, I bring before you my loved ones. I ask that you watch over them, guide them, and bless them abundantly. Father, just as you have revealed to me the importance of not blocking your blessings, I pray that their hearts will also be receptive to this truth. Protect them from every force that might be working against them. And in the name of Jesus, let them experience an overflow of your grace, love, and favor in every area of their lives. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, Lord, I thank you for every heart that is humbled before you right now. I pray that a mighty wave of spiritual awakening and realization will sweep across every heart. Let the scales fall from our eyes so we may see clearly the ways in which we might be blocking our own blessings. Ignite in us a fervent desire to draw closer to you, to live in harmony with your will, and to be open vessels ready to receive your endless gifts. Thank you, Father for hearing and answering my prayer. With an expectant heart, I look forward to the manifestation of your abundant blessings in my life. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Have you ever wondered if you have the Holy Spirit? Or have you ever found yourself questioning whether the Holy Spirit is active in your life? You're certainly not alone. If we are honest, Many of us grapple with these very thoughts at different points in our spiritual journey. So, how can we identify the signs of the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives? Today, as we take a look at some of the signs of the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you to not just know about the Holy Spirit, but to truly know Him. There is a big difference. Come to experience the Holy Spirit and let him lead you every step of the way, your life will never be the same. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessings of this prayer. The Bible offers clear insights and assurances about the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. Romans 8 verse 9 says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. This passage highlights that having the Holy Spirit is a definitive mark of being a true believer in Christ. Furthermore, Acts 2 verse 38 advises us, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This tells us that the Holy Spirit is a gift given to all who genuinely turn to Christ, signaling the beginning of a transformative relationship. Imagine holding a well-worn Bible, its pages filled with little scribbles, highlighted verses and so, bookmarks. Even though Keturah's Each page you turn tells stories of faith, resilience, and redemption. As you read, familiar verses comfort you, while new insights challenge and grow your faith. Each word, each story in this Bible reflects God's unwavering love for us, and that gentle nudge, the quiet voice in your heart, guiding you to a particular verse or insight, this is just one example of what being led by the Spirit truly means. So, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're not just speaking of a distant concept or vague idea. We are speaking of the promised Holy Spirit, God's ever-present helper in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the living breath of God, the force that can move mountains. This Spirit is our helper, standing by our side, the teacher that reveals truths, the comforter in times when we're downhearted, and the guide that directs our steps on unfamiliar path and guides us through the storms of life. Just as Jesus said in John 14, verse 26, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and remind you of all I have shared with you. Through every twist and turn of life, the Holy Spirit is there, playing multiple roles, always guiding, teaching, helping, and comforting us in this journey as believers. We realize that stepping into faith is more than just a choice. It's an invitation to a life filled with the power and love of Christ. It's about feeling a new energy, the same energy that empowered Jesus to perform miracles, heal the sick, and touch countless lives. But remember, in Zechariah 4 verse 6, the Bible tells us that it is not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit. This verse emphasizes that it is God's Spirit that empowers us to do extraordinary things just as Jesus was empowered to perform miracles and heal the sick. From the stories in the New Testament to the exciting adventures in the Book of Acts, the Holy Spirit's presence is evident. These stories are not just events from the past, but are alive and relevant today, reminding us that the Holy Spirit continues to work wonders in our lives. So today, let's explore ten signs that show the Holy Spirit's presence among us. Sign number one, transformation of character. In our lives, change is inevitable. Like seasons shifting, we too undergo changes, both inside and outside. But when the Holy Spirit is actively working within us, there's a particular kind of change, a special transformation that is unlike any other, as the Bible in Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 explicitly states. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These aren't just words, but transformative changes. Their presence are an indication of a heart deeply influenced by God's grace and the Holy Spirit. Whether you are making reference to your own life or the life of others, these changes should be present in a believer's character. It's as if a garden, once dominated by wild weeds, suddenly flourishes with colorful and fragrant blossoms. Consider that this transformation isn't always instant, nor is it always easy. There will be days of struggle, of doubt, days of trying and failing. So I am not here to tell you that your walk with God is going to be perfect. But what's important is that in the midst of these trials, we persevere 
leaning on the unwavering strength and grace of God. For it's not the absence of challenges that defines our faith, but our resilience and reliance on Him while experiencing them. It's the Holy Spirit that nurtures us, gently tending to our souls, guiding us through those challenging moments. Just as a potter shapes clay, the Spirit molds our character, smoothing out rough edges and filling the cracks with Christ's love. Over time, our desires shift from the worldly to the heavenly, from pleasing ourselves to pleasing God. It's a journey from being self-centered to being Christ-centered, and it's truly one of the most beautiful adventures one can experience. Sign number two, desire to pray. Prayer is like our heart's song, a sacred melody that we share with the Creator. Yet, there will be moments when our voice falters, when emotions cloud our thoughts, and words escape us. It's in these silent gaps, these pauses, that the Holy Spirit steps in. As Romans 8 verse 26 beautifully states, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. This is telling us how the Spirit becomes our voice, translating our heart's deepest yearnings into a language only God understands. It's like having a friend who knows exactly what's on your mind, even when you can't find the words to express it. One of the beauty of prayer is its simplicity. It doesn't require grand gestures or eloquent words. All it needs is a sincere heart. The Holy Spirit amplifies this sincerity by turning our simple whispers into profound conversations with God. He becomes our partner in prayer, guiding our spirit and deepening our connection with the Almighty. So, when we kneel down to pray, we're never truly alone. The Spirit is right there with us, ensuring that every sigh, every tear, Every unspoken word is heard, felt, and cherished by God. Sign number three, conviction of sin. We've all had moments in our lives when we felt a tug at our heart, signaling that something we've done wasn't right. This deep sense of awareness is not merely a feeling of guilt. It's the Holy Spirit working within, heightening our sensitivity to sin and driving our hearts towards repentance. Look at what Jesus himself stated in John 16, verse 8, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. We see this happening in the story of King David and the prophet Nathan. When David strayed, it was Nathan's gentle rebuke inspired by God's Spirit, that guided him back to righteousness. The Holy Spirit plays a similar role in our lives, offering gentle corrections and guiding us back when we drift. But here's the thing. The challenge arises when some of us overlook the gentle nudges of the Holy Spirit that has been urging us to return to the right path. Over time, if ignored, these sins can form habits or strongholds in our lives that may become challenging to break free from. These strongholds not only entangle us, but also complicate our lives even further. Sign number four, understanding of scripture. Have you ever read a scripture that you've seen countless times before, but suddenly it speaks to you in a new and profound way? I can surely testify to this, and I know that this experience is not unique to me. That's the Holy Spirit's work, making the Word of God come alive and making it resonate deeply and personally with us. John 16 verse 13 assures us, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. The Bible tells us about the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8 verses 27 to 39. While reading from the book of Isaiah, the Ethiopian eunuch was approached by Philip, without the Spirit's guidance, 
The eunuch struggled to understand the scripture he read, but with Philip's spirit-led explanation, the message became clear, and he was baptized. As we delve into God's word, the Spirit consistently sheds light on scriptures, revealing deeper truths and making connections that we might have missed on our own. Sign number five, empowerment for service. Imagine finding a well of strength and ability within you that you never knew existed. That's the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, equipping believers with the strength to serve, witness, and testify for Christ. Acts 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Think of the Apostle Peter. Before the Holy Spirit came upon him, he denied Jesus out of fear. But afterwards, filled with the Spirit, he stood in front of thousands, boldly proclaiming the gospel. Likewise, as the Spirit works within us, our God-given talents and spiritual gifts not only become evident but are also refined and utilized, all for the glory of God. Sign number six, increased compassion. Compassion is more than just a fleeting sentiment. It's an overflowing of God's love in our hearts. Romans 5 verse 5 states, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. This love transforms us, leading us to genuinely care for those around us. Remember the Good Samaritan. His compassionate act towards a total stranger showcased a heart touched by divine love. Yet, it's essential to note that sometimes other individuals may also outwardly perform acts of kindness without genuine compassion at the core. But true spiritual transformation is marked, not just by actions, but by an authentic love that stems from a deep connection with God. So, there is a difference. As it relates to the Good Samaritan, in a similar way, the Holy Spirit stirs in us an authentic concern, aligning our hearts with Jesus' profound command to love God, holy, and to extend that same love to others. Under the Holy Spirit's influence, alongside this love for our fellow humans, there also arises a deep, genuine love for Jesus himself. It's an affection that is sincere, going beyond mere ritual or religion, while drawing us closer to his heart and his ways. This transformation is a testament to the Spirit's power to redirect our affections and priorities, anchoring them firmly in Christ. Sign number seven, speaking in tongues. On the day of Pentecost, a miraculous event occurred. Acts 2, verse 4, tells us, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This was evident in the early church where believers were empowered by the Spirit, expressing their faith in diverse yet unifying ways. But even today, this miraculous gift of speaking in tongues is still present in the lives of many believers, serving as a testament to the Spirit's active presence. Consider this. Speaking in tongues is a supernatural sign showcasing the Spirit's magnificent work within us. It's a divine utterance that allows our spirit to communicate directly with God. While not everyone may experience this in the same way, it remains a genuine testament to the Spirit's overflow within our lives. So, if you ever doubt the Spirit's presence in your life, due to your experience differing from others, remember that it isn't about comparison. Each of us have our own story. Embrace your unique experience, for it is genuine and valid. It is a testament to the ever-present overflow of the Spirit in your life. Interestingly, I can vividly recall my first experience of speaking in tongues. It occurred at night, 
right after I was emerging from a dream. So, these spiritual moments manifest in their own perfect timing. Like many believers, you can seek God's guidance and request the gift of speaking in tongues as a sign of the Holy Spirit's presence. Be patient and avoid comparing yourself with others. Remember, it's a gracious gift and a unique experience. All that's required of you is to be open-hearted and welcome it. Sign number eight, guidance in decision-making. Life is filled with crossroads, decisions that can significantly shape our paths. These decisions can sometimes mean the difference between life and death, success or failure, seizing an opportunity or missing it. But with the Holy Spirit's influence as believers, we aren't left wandering in the dark or to navigate these moments alone. As we tune in to the Holy Spirit's divine guidance, we find clarity even in life's most complex moments. Romans 8 verse 14 assures us, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So, the Holy Spirit is our compass, providing divine direction and wisdom. Consider the story of Paul and Silas in the book of Acts. When they were imprisoned for preaching the gospel, rather than falling into despair, they sang praises to God. As a result, there was a miraculous earthquake that opened the prison doors. Their unwavering faith and the guidance of the Holy Spirit not only led to their physical freedom, but also to the jailer's spiritual salvation. Therefore, this kind of divine direction not only enlightens us with the truth or points us to the right path, but also provides peace, assuring us that we're in alignment with God's will. Sign number nine, biblical signs and wonders. The Bible is not just a book of past events. It's a testament to God's enduring power and the wonders that come through faith. Mark 16 verses 17 to 18 promises. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Such divine demonstrations aren't limited to biblical times. Reflect on the Apostle Paul's journey in Acts. Once blinded on the road to Damascus, he later regained sight through Ananias' prayer, showcasing God's miraculous power. In today's world, believers are still witnesses to and instruments of God's marvelous works, proving the timeless nature of His promises and the ever-present power of the Holy Spirit. And sign number 10, peace and faithfulness. Amidst the whirlwind of life's uncertainties and challenges, there exists a sanctuary of calm available to every believer. Philippians 4 verse 7 tells us, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This isn't a temporary feeling or a short-lived comfort. It's a profound, enduring peace that anchors our souls. Consider the Apostle Paul imprisoned and bound, yet his letters radiated with an inexplicable peace. Even in chains, he wrote words of encouragement and hope, revealing the deep well of peace that was his through the Holy Spirit. Such inner peace is not dictated by our surroundings, but it comes from the Holy Spirit, reminding us continually of God's everlasting love and care. Also, in a world where people often change their minds, and don't always stay loyal. The Holy Spirit gives believers a strong and lasting commitment to faithfulness. So, if you're struggling with staying faithful, you might want to seek the guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit to help you maintain your commitment to your spiritual beliefs and values. Consider that as a believer. If you are unfaithful to others, 
you are also being unfaithful to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The devil will stick around if he finds that you're not resisting. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible reminds us, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. The strong sense of commitment or ability to stay faithful isn't just something we do on our own. It's a divine gift given to us. Think of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. As stones rained down on him, he gazed heavenward and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Instead of anger or fear, Stephen's heart overflowed with faithfulness, praying for his persecutors. Such unwavering commitment to God's teachings, even in the face of dire adversity, is a testament to the Spirit's transformative power within, guiding us to hold fast to God's promises and live out our faith courageously. Isn't it comforting to know that in our journey with God, we are not alone? The Holy Spirit actively works within us, nurturing our growth, guiding our steps, and instilling virtues that reflect the heart of Christ. Let us embrace these signs with open hearts, trusting in God's plan and purpose for our lives. As we journey forward, let's remain steadfast, leaning into His unwavering love and grace. With the Holy Spirit by our side, we can confidently face tomorrow, knowing we are held, guided, and loved beyond measure. Remember, we are living in times where many voices clamor for our attention. But there's one voice, the Spirit's gentle whisper, that can guide us through the most turbulent of storms and into the calm of God's embrace. Let us not merely seek the signs, but yearn for a deeper, intimate relationship with our Creator through the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, changing us to become more like Jesus. In that intimate relationship, we find true purpose, peace, and the profound joy of knowing we walk hand in hand with the Almighty. So, let us continually foster our bond with the Holy Spirit, ensuring we remain in tune to His daily guidance and influence. Now, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me, so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the Creator of heaven and earth, God of both the visible and the invisible. I praise You and give You all the glory. You are a bright light in the dark, giving comfort to the downhearted and strength to the weak, Lord. Today I come before you to seek your holy presence. I invite your Holy Spirit into my life. Make your holy presence known to me, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are my helper and comforter. May you fill me, empower me, guide me, and teach me. Holy Spirit, I ask that you bring about a true change of my character. May you fill me with the fruit of your Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, help me to show these changes in my life, not just for my own good, but also for those around me. May my heart align with your desires, and may my actions reflect your love. Father, as I seek to draw closer to you, I lay down my burdens and seek your guidance. Through the Holy Spirit, I am grateful that your Holy Spirit steers me away from sin and towards your righteousness and grace. Lord, may your Holy Spirit help me to have a deeper understanding of the Scriptures. May your Word come alive in my heart, bringing light to every corner of my being and leading me to your truth. I pray for empowerment, Lord, 
so that through your Holy Spirit I may be a vessel for your service, reaching out to others with love, compassion, and kindness. Father, let me recognize the gentle nudges of your Holy Spirit in my decision-making, ensuring that every step I take is in alignment with your perfect will. Lord, as I grow in faith, may signs and wonders manifest in my life in ways that will bring glory and honor to your name. May you guide me to understand and receive the gift of speaking in tongues, using it for your divine purposes. Father, may your Holy Spirit give me the peace that surpasses all understanding. May you bless me with an unwavering faithfulness to stand firm in trials, always staying in obedience to your word and your will. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every force that seeks to derail my journey. Father, I ask for your divine protection. I am thankful that you are my deliverer. You are my shield and buckler. Lord, you are my hiding place. I declare that everything is working for me and not against me. Lord, may you bless the work of my hands and bless me in my comings and goings. Deliver me from all evil. Lead me not into temptation and keep me close to you. In the name of Jesus, I declare good health and healing over my body, mind, and spirit. I cast out every spirit of confusion, doubt, and fear from my life. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you are greater than any challenge I may face. Lord, as I bring my loved ones before you, I ask that they seek you more each day. May you show them mercy and bring them to experience your peace, love, and grace. Father, let their lives resonate with testimonies of your goodness. And may they find refuge under your wings and comfort through your Holy Spirit. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, for every person opening their heart to you right now, I ask that you fill them with your Holy Spirit. I pray that we will experience your divine touch, a revelation of your love, and a profound understanding of our purpose in you. For those feeling weak, Holy Spirit, may you give them strength and courage to overcome. For those experiencing sadness, sickness, pain, or hurt, Holy Spirit, may you be their comforter and healer. Lord, help those who are worried or troubled in their hearts and minds to feel your peace and love. For those who are feeling confused or lost, Holy Spirit, may you help them to come to know all truth and to be their counselor, providing them with guidance and clarity. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you. In the name of Jesus, you can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. 
and we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God. That is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. Stand in faith with us while we pray. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.